Hi, this is Tim, and today I have my helpers with me, Wendell and Michael, and we are gonna take apart this belt sander motor. After my video about how three-phase motors actually rotate, I've had a lot of people say, I think I get it now, but what does the inside of a motor look like? So I was getting ready to throw this away, and I thought I'd just take the time to go take it apart with you and my kids. Before we start, please take a minute to like and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And don't forget to click the notification bell and click all so you don't miss any videos from this dude. And okay. comment what you want to see next. Okay, let's get started. This is a nice heavy belt sander and really this was my dad's and I think it had been around since I was a kid. Yes, there is no guard. Wendell's gonna keep her hair out of the way of it during this demonstration. When you pull, Wendell, will you pull the switch out over there? When you pull the switch out, it doesn't rotate. It hums like that. Now, as a kid, I was taught probably before kindergarten that when you start this motor, go ahead and start it again. But all you had to do was roll start it, and it would get going. Amber doesn't think that's a very safe practice, so she made us replace the belt sander when the kids started using it. But what well, we're going to take apart and talk about what is probably wrong with this. Most single phase motors, if you remember from our motor video, which I'll put a link to in the description, they have their primary pole, which is where you connect 110 in this case, or it could be 220 single phase. And then they have this other pole that connects to the capacitor. Now I don't see a capacitor on the outside of this, so this may not actually have one, but we're gonna take it apart, find out, and see what the inside of it looks like. So first thing, hopefully this is actually a ground wire, and if it is, then yeah, this just has 110. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take it apart and then make sure, because what is this, shaded pole? There's one that does start without a capacitor and I can't ever remember the exact types. In a motor, when you turn it, you should not feel any growling or anything in it. Wendell, you want to turn that and see what you think? Pretty good. But it's too rusty. It's too rusted. Old. It's rusted and old. She says that about me too. I remember that. No. You know, in the reading comprehension, the squeaky wheel always gets the oil. Oh yeah, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So this motor does have a centrifugal switch here. So we're gonna figure out exactly how this works. So right here, this is a, a centrifugal spring. It has these weights. You can't quite see them down here. We'll take them out in a little bit. But as this motor spins up faster, it shoves this piece right here further up, which presses this switch and should kick out a starting winding, but I thought these always had to have a capacitor. So we'll take it on apart and see what else we see. So here is the armature, and yeah, this thing is definitely probably seen somewhere. So you can kind of see how it's, it has these spiral windings here, and there should be divisions between all these, but they're, they are near worn out, I think. Also, now you can really see the weights that I was talking about. As this thing spins up, it's gonna push, it's gonna use these weights right here. It's gonna push that switch up. Okay, and there does look like there's something back here. You wanna take that off for me, Wendell, this cover? One just fell out. I'm gonna leave it to my dad. There's the <laughs> ground wire that was just kind of pulled up into the motor casing. So there is no capacitor in this motor. So this must be one of the shaded pole motors. But just so you can see that, everybody wanted to know, there is the inside of the motor. Wendell, you grab my, that picture right there. And if you look closely, and hopefully this shows up in the video, there is a really big winding, and then there's a smaller winding, which is kind of, which is kind of the two windings you see here. And I get the feeling the bigger winding is probably, and here I'm probably gonna use the wrong term because yeah, this is more of an exploratory video, but I'd say it's creating a greater inductance that kind of causes that phase shift that'll make the motor rotate. So that's kind of my crazy thought on um, how this motor actually works. And somebody who's super smart will be sure to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So there you go. I hope that helps you see what the inside of a motor looks like. Maybe I'll tear apart a three-phase motor one day and I'll, I'll set this aside where we can keep it and we can compare the two later. Or maybe I'll show you how to scrap out. 
a copper motor because really I just need to take a grinder and cut all these windings. I think everything will slide out from other end. That's how you can get the copper out. I don't know which way we'll go that. What do you want to see? You want to see this compared to a three phase or do you want to see how to scrap out a motor? Let me know in the comments. Till next time. Hi. Queen and Andy saves a day. Hi, this is Tim. And to Sorry. <laughs> Need it. She's just always used to being a boss. No, I'm not a boss. Michael, can you unplug our power? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Maybe that'll be our next research thing. Is why why are Alan Riches named Alan Riches? We did look up Tesla. Yes, we have. I learned something new. There was a guy named Tesla. Yeah, there was. Well, it, last name. Yeah, they figured out that he was named after a car company, right? Yeah. Hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.